Hello my friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome to Grace in My Space. Today I have a really fun video in store for you. We're gonna talk all about how to infuse your home with simple but beautiful things. Everyday things, special things, wonderful things, and how you can make your home look styled all the time without actually styling it. No pressure. That's what I that's what I'm going to accomplish in today's video. So today I want to walk you through my house as it is on a daily basis, picked up because no one wants to see all my junk everywhere, but not really styled. And I want to show you several things that I've done in each room to make it a simple but beautiful space with a few easy tips and tricks that you can take and put into your own home or might inspire you to have a different idea along the same lines. One thing that social media and just the marketing world in general has done is made us feel like our homes need to be pristine. And I really just believe that there is so many ways to make your home beautiful, even in the everyday tasks cooking in your kitchen, eating in your dining room, lounging on your sofa. These things are all a part of a normal everyday life and your home should be a reflection of how you use the space of your own personal style. And it shouldn't be something that chains you to feeling like you have to keep up with trends or to keep up with those around you or others' expectations. So today, I really just want to focus this video on some really easy ways for you to maintain your normal life and see beauty in it and in the mundane tasks that we have to do on a daily basis just because it's part of life. So we're gonna walk through each room in my home and I'm gonna show you some really easy ways to just infuse beauty through really, really simple things that you may have not really considered or you probably have and you just need to really be more intentional with how you put that into action in your own space because sometimes all it takes is just that little one extra step to really enjoy and create spaces that you love in your home. So let's get to it. Let's start in the kitchen. One really easy way to dress up your kitchen is to put a pop of art somewhere. It's a little bit unexpected. You don't normally have art in a kitchen. A lot of people are fearful of grease splatters and things like that. So if you are, just don't put it by the stove. But I really like my mom's beautiful handmade art here hanging on the wall as you come into our kitchen. I've also put art before on our open shelving in the back of the kitchen there, which has been a really beautiful statement for normal everyday use, but also for season specific like Christmas or Easter, etc. I'm so proud of this. Day two, sourdough starter. The first time I tried it, I used the wrong flour and had to throw the entire thing away. Day two though, it's going well so far. Now this is a fantastic example of making something look pretty that's simple and a necessity. Obviously, people like to bake. I could create a sourdough starter in any kind of container, but I chose this one because it looks pretty on my counter. Now this is a great example of being really intentional with the things that you use on a daily basis and making them practical, but also pretty. This is a really cute little jar. I like the way it looks on my counter. It serves all the purposes I need for being able to let the sourdough breathe and being able to tighten it when I want to put it in the fridge, etc. but it looks pretty in the process. Sometimes all it takes is one extra search to find something that's gonna be functional, but you also enjoy seeing every day. Same thing goes for simple things like flour, sugar, whatever you use on a daily basis. If you're a big baker, if you're a big cook, just looking for utensils or for jars, containers, plates, cups, mugs that might sit on the counter, anything that's gonna be visible, just make sure it looks pretty too. And then it's not really clutter, it's more just easily accessible, you can grab it and go, but it looks pretty in the meantime. I don't know about you, but I always have lists just everywhere, but I really like to use the island or 
Sometimes I put it right over here as a central point for things like grab and go snacks for the kids. And if you put it in a cute container, it's pretty. <laughs> I'll eat that one. Is there anything more satisfying than having no dirty dishes out? I wouldn't know, but I would think it would be. Now one common thing that you will see in almost, yeah, almost every single room in my house is the use of indoor plants. I really enjoy indoor plants. I know that there's a lot of people who don't want to tackle keeping another thing alive. I understand. When I was in the baby toddler stage of motherhood, indoor plants were not happening in my home. But I'm past that now and I do feel I have a little bit more time to commit to keeping things alive that aren't my children. So I have added these cutie little things kind of all over the house. Isn't it fun? I just think it's cute. And so if you like plants, if you have the time, if you want to try them out, I always, always, always would say add a live plant to your space. It will make it feel cozy. It'll brighten it up. It'll give it a little bit more vibrance and livelihood. And it serves as decor. Now I have several dozen plants in my house. I learned how to propagate and then never stopped. But it will all the way from teeny tiny countertop to trees that are taller than me. If you are interested in indoor plant care tips, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough interest, I'll do a video in the future. One thing that I think is a really important thing to kind of just keep in the back of your mind is that you are creating small moments in every room of your house. This right here is a little vignette, a few items grouped together that creates a small moment. It's something that adds interest without being overpowering. It also can be something that serves a purpose, like having a baking corner in your kitchen, which I'll share in just a minute. But one of the easiest ways to kind of break down how to create a simple and beautiful home is to think of it as small moments that you're creating in your room and just making sure that each small moment kind of fits within the overall theme of your space and they're cohesive when you put them all together. This is the area of my kitchen that I use the most. It's right next to the stove, so it just has to be the most functional. Up here, I make it pretty. But if you don't have space, make this storage. For a lot of years, I had my open shelving store our normal everyday plates and cups and glasses. And so it was really easy just to grab them off, load your food up and go. I might put those back up there. Yeah, I like that idea. But there are other ways that I like to just kind of dress up my kitchen. I find a lot of joy in antiques. I just think they're really pretty and storied and have a lot of character and charm to them. I put all of my utensils in here, make the utensils pretty. That's really easy to do. It's not hard to find pretty things anymore. Even a quick swap of your olive oil, which I use on a daily basis, into um, a pretty container, which if you've seen past videos, you know how much I have to protect this thing. A pretty bowl sitting out holds all of my onions. There's a lot of ways that you can make things pretty, but also a practical storage solution. Now let's pop into the dining room. One of my favorite parts about the dining room is this built-in shelf that I built out of an existing doorway. This used to walk into my bedroom, which no one wants their bedroom to be connected to the dining room where guests are eating. So I filled it, I made shelves out of it. I'll have a video up here for you if you're interested in doing the same thing and want to learn how, but this is my moment in the dining room. If you have space in a living room, family room, dining room, even a bedroom to put shelving, it's a really easy way to make your home look styled and beautiful all the time with really simple additions. These are just simple things that you can literally find every single day. We have some antique pottery. This one actually was brought back from England with my mom, but the rest of them are just from here. Some thrifted artwork. You can find mortar and pestles at home goods, like with zero problem whatsoever. Pop a seasonal flower or stem or branch into one of the vessels and you're done. That's all that it takes. This stays very similar pretty much year round. I'll swap in and out just a few things, maybe some springy artwork rather than winter artwork, but it's a really easy way to consolidate a lot of your favorite pieces into like kind of a contained area. <laughs> Took me a long time to get that one out. And that way if space doesn't feel so cluttered, it feels more styled. 
As you can see, my buffet is not styled. This is kind of how it is on a daily basis, unless there's a bunch of kids junk on top of it, which I may have cleared off for this video. But adding something super simple like a plant and then an oversized item on the other side balances it, makes it look like it's decorated, but it still gives you a lot of leeway to add and take away as you need to for entertaining guests, for seasonal decor changes that you want, and also for very special projects that your kids make you. Like this wooden candle holder, it's a little wobbly, or this wooden candle holder that my son made for me because he got a lathe for Christmas. I'm gonna have a lot of wood products to show you in the near future. Just like the open shelving on the other side of the dining room, this nook is another great example of how you can contain, like have a de decor zone, right? You wanna contain it a little bit so it doesn't feel cluttered, it's not in your way of daily living, it's kind of up and out of the way, but it still looks nicely decorated if every other surface is not. Really simple groupings, like a grouping of a similar item, like pottery is a great way to make an impact. A grouping of platters is a great way to make an impact. Anytime you have a collection or more of one, it makes more of a statement as this is something that I value and cherish because I'm buying a lot of them. Let me show you, hold on. My husband asked me when I was gonna stop buying wood bowls. I told him I thought I was done. So, I really, I really like them. It was a good example of collections. Now, this is something that you won't see in every single home. You won't see it in every single store because they are unique. They're mostly antique. And I've collected them from a lot of different locations, so no two are alike. And that is another tip for how to create really simple, beautiful spaces is to make sure that you're investing in pieces that aren't just run of the mill. Look for the ones that are kind of quirky. Look for the ones that have a lot of character. Look for the pieces that speak to you and that you actually will look at and smile when you see it in your home and not just in another tchotchke off the shelf of a department store. Unless it makes you smile, then go for it. I have plenty of things in my home from Amazon, Target, all the places. Which leads me to another tip for how to create simple, beautiful spaces, and that is to mix and match the styles of your bigger furnishings. Now you obviously want your home to feel cohesive, but that doesn't mean that everything needs to be the same exact style. I have a Facebook Marketplace fine cabinet that I transformed with paint very easily. I have a thrifted coffee table, also from Facebook Marketplace, which I've refinished three times in a variety of ways. Then I have some brand new armchairs, I have brand new sofa, but all in different styles. We've got a velvet sofa, which is a little bit more high-end polished, and then I've got a slip cover sofa that is pretty casual and laid back, but both of them have more modern flair to them, so they fit together. One thing that you can do really easily, if you don't like anything on your surfaces, if you're a minimalist, um, down here it's not minimalistic, so. If you're a minimalist, just ignore that spot. But look up here, see how clean it is? This is a great example of how you can have a piece of furniture serving a purpose. It's storing my blankets, it's storing my books, it's storing some decor, but the art above it is actually the focal point. And it makes it really easy to have it look polished all the time, even though it's serving a practical purpose, because the things up here, steal the show and are pretty to look at. Now I'm not a minimalist, so while this does look fine, this would look better. Let's talk quickly about everyday items and your coffee table. This is where my kids do life. They don't do anything in their rooms except for sleep. They like to be in the center of the house with the family, which is wonderful and I hope lasts into their teenage years. But that is why all I have on my coffee table is a basket full of books that I like to read, but can also be very easily taken off and moved out of the way so that they can fill this up with homework and art stuff and everything that they do, matchbox cars, who knows, whatever they're gonna do today, computers. And 
then I can put it back when I want to, if there's a reason to, if I've got guests coming over. And it's really easy to have something that's just pretty, but pretty standard on a coffee table. Now let's look down here real quick. We live in Michigan, it's cold. Even in the summer at nighttime, we always use blankets. So I like to just stack some cohesive colored blankets together right here, easy access. These are the ones that we use the most and the one that is hanging. So we can easily pull it out, use it when we're done, watch. That's all it took to put it away. And it kind of, it looks a little pretty. Maybe you don't like the messy look, but maybe you do. I like the messy look, I also like the stacked look. So this is three ways that I like to store blankets. Hanging for the ones you use every single day, it's really easy to pop them back up. In a basket for your kiddos to grab out and throw back, or stacked for those of you who like things a little bit more polished. Let's talk really quickly about focal points. Not every home has something that is overtly a focal point, like a fireplace is a great example of a focal point. Not every home has that, not every room has that. So one of the tasks that you can do in your own home is create the focal point. Sometimes the focal point serves a purpose like getting warm by a fire. A TV is another focal point. So all the furniture will kind of point in the direction of the TV because it's the focal point of the room. Other times it's things like your bed in a bedroom, or maybe you have a special cabinet, or maybe you have a bookshelf and you want that to be the focal point. Every room should have a focal point. It doesn't have to be overpowering, but it should be the statement maker of the room so that the rest of the room can kind of just like rest and it doesn't have to be in competition with the focal point. It can just be kind of plain and basic, but the room still feels kind of polished and put together because your one focal point is styled and done. For me, the space in this room that stays styled that I don't do a whole lot to is the cabinet. The mantle I change with the seasons over here doesn't really ever change unless I'm doing something to the top of the table, like a simple centerpiece. With the cabinet, I can switch in and out with decor pieces that are seasonal really easily. It's behind glass, it doesn't even get dusty, and it always looks nice and put together so that if the rest of the room is chaotic, I can quickly just declutter, throw things away, get it back to the basics, and it still looks decorated, even though the tabletops are all plain, they've got nothing on them except for, you know, Kleenex box. And now welcome to our basement family room. This is where movie nights happen. That's the only purpose for this room is to watch TV. <laughs> Everything else our family does happens upstairs. But that doesn't mean that I don't want this space to also feel polished and beautiful. This is one area of my home that I wanna focus on in 2023. It's finished and it looks nice, but it doesn't really serve all of the purposes that I want it to serve for our family. We've got some mismatched furniture, little teeny things that I wanna change, but I still wanna show you one of the easiest ways to make your home look beautiful in a very simple manner and which has nothing to do with decor, and that is accent walls. Now you can see in this space, I have a little accent right here, and then the back wall has a wood accent on it. I will use accent walls pretty sparingly when they're together. So I love my back accent wall. It's very simple. It's literally just tiny pieces of wood nailed to the wall in a pattern. That is all an accent wall is when you're using wood molding or paneling. Over here, I created this so that I could have kind of like a way to group my artwork so that it felt pulled together and cohesive on a very large wall. I didn't have enough art to spread out on the entire wall, so I tucked it all together with some black paint. This is one of the areas that I'd like to bring together a little bit more down here and have be a little bit more cohesive with the style of the rest of my home, but I haven't figured it out yet, so it stays this way for now. Once again, drawing your attention to the plants in this space, there's not actually a lot of decor down here. I've got a couple pieces of pottery and I have something simple on the coffee table with Lego guys in it. But otherwise, all I have are cozy blankets and pillows and plants. Your home doesn't have to have a lot of decor in it to look beautiful. It can have simple statement walls, it can have 
large overscale art. It can have that focal point that you're going for in the room, which in this room is this back wall, or if I flip you around the TV wall, and kind of creating those focal points in each space allows you to have sparing decor or to swap out your decor really easily so that you're not feeling like your home is bland if it's not decorated. Now today I only had time to kind of focus on the main living areas, family room, dining room, living room, kitchen, but in the future I will be focusing specifically on bedrooms for this topic and also just how to decorate a bedroom so that it's functional but also can work if it's a really small space. So stay tuned for that video to come. I hope that this gave you some ideas for ways that you can infuse simple, beautiful, everyday things into your own home and make it feel very cozy but also still be really practical for you. And I would really love to know, drop it in the comments, what you do to be really intentional about this topic in your own home. After you've left your comment, make sure and read through the other comments because I am guessing you will find a lot of value, I know I always do, in what other people are recommending. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you next week.